Shalom everybody. We are Parshat Lech Lecha. Some insights based on Rabbi Nachman's teachings, Rav Nosin's explanation in the Kutei Halachot, Birkat Hoda Halachavav, based on the Kutei Mara 24. Before anything, uh, if you feel that these classes are helping you, have helped you, please, please share and post them onto your status. So this week's parasha, Lech Lecha, so amazing, so rich, okay? Uh, w- one of the things, one of the highlights of the parasha is Avram is going to become Avraham. Like Rashi quotes the Midrash, Avram eno molid, Avraham molid. Aval Avraham molid. This is after Avram won the war against the five kings, the four kings and the five kings, sorry. He subdued Nimrod and he saved the Melech Sdom and saved Lot and everything, okay? So he was worried that he might have lost from his merits for the world to come. And Hashem said, "Don't." Hashem promised him, your reward is still intact. Nothing was taken away from you, uh, from you fighting and having the miraculous war. Like we know that he threw earth and the earth became arrows and that's how he was able to kill all the enemies he just threw earth and the earth became shooting arrows and spears and just went into all the enemies and that's how Avram Avinu won the war okay so then Avram Avinu told Hashem but you know what is the all the blessings you give to me if I I don't leave I'm not leaving behind anyone I have no children so then Hashem promised him like this he said Avram you saw in the stars and the constellations that Avram and Sarai, Avram, Aleph, Bet, Resh, Mem, and Sarai, Sin, Resh, Yud, and you guys don't give birth. But I'm going to change your name, and with the change you are going to give birth, the change is that he adds a He to Avraham, and Sarai, the Yud, becomes a He, okay? This special He, Rabbi Nachman discusses the idea of He giving birth. This is what's called the He Hadat, the He of Da'at. This is Likutei Moran, I think it's lesson 53. In, in, this, in this, this lesson, Rabbi Nachman says there's five things that separate and differentiate our Da'at from Hashem's Da'at. Okay? And when you reach to connect to these five, then you can, a person who's barren can give birth. So that's what Hashem told Avram Avinu. You as yourself cannot give birth. I'm going to add in the letter He. Why specifically the letter He? This is what Rabbi Nachman explains in Lesson 53. Because the, the letter He corresponds to Da'at. Which Da'at? The Da'at of Hashem. Which is the difference between Hashem's Da'at and our Da'at. It's pretty deep, those five concepts. You can take a look in Lesson 53. What they are specifically. The different categories of what is that Da'at that differentiates our, our knowledge from Hashem's knowledge. So Hashem said, I'm going to give you the He of the Da'at, which is Hashem's Da'at necessarily. And through this hey, you will be able to give birth. So Rabbi Nachman goes into this, that hey, dot, when a person has dot, this is how he's able to give birth. A person is barren because there's a lack of dot. The, the birth, believe it or not, in Judaism we believe this very much, that birth is dependent on the dot. Because the root of the semen, of the seed of man, is in the brain. Right? It, Nozlim, it's from Shia Shirim, the verse, and the Zohar's explanation. Nozlim min levanon. And they're flowing, liquids, fluids flowing, the rivers flowing from Lebanon. So the Zohar reads like this, Nozlim, in other words, the man's seed, the semen, the seed of life. Nozlim min libuna, don't read Le- Lebanon, like Lebanon, which is a reference to Yerushalayim, the, the, the white house of the Beit HaMikdash. Don't read Lebanon, read libuna de mocha, the white mass of the brain. That is from where the seed, the sperm comes from. So we, we, we believe very much in Judaism. The root of the seed is in the mind. Then it goes down to the kidneys. And the kidneys prepare. Mevashlim de zera. And then it goes into the whole reproductive system. And causes birth. So with that, the, the dat, Rabbi Nachman teaches, when there's dat, that's how a person can give birth. And a lack of giving birth is a lack of dat. Okay? So now Rav Nosen takes us a step further. And why there's specifically five? He says there's five types of grain that cause dot because the dot of a person is dependent on the food intake. You are what you eat. It's a true thing. According to your food intake, that's your dot. If not born, you're eating refined food and eating in holiness, that will affect your dot. Okay? 
That's why he says, not saying, it's no wonder there are five types of grains that are the main eating of man. The main nourishment is bread, right? Lechem is the main nourishment of man, technically. Pat, pat shacharit, pat lechem. On Shabbat, we make, we make a suda with bread, right? So there's five types of grains that require what's called trumot and masrot, or kechala, hafrashat chala, okay? So those are five types of, of grains. Why five? Because they correspond to the five of the dot. And Rav Nosen goes a step further. He says, but in order for food to influence the dot, and in order for a person to connect to this dot of Hashem, you need what's called simcha, the five kolot of simcha. There's also, Rav Nosen explains, there's five sounds of kolot. We sing this at Chatunot, right? There's kol sason, kol simcha, Kol chatan vekol kala, and then kol omim hodu l'ashem kitov. It's a verse. So there's kol sason, a, a voice of super delighting. Kol simcha, a, a sound, a voice of joy. The kol, the joy of the chatan, the joy, the voice, joy of the kala, and the voice of saying, giving thanks to Hashem. These are the five kolot mentioned, I think, by the prophet Isaiah or Yirmiyahu, where that verse is found. Okay, and Rav Nosson says, in order for food to influence that, in order to merit the da'at of Hashem, you need the prerequisite of simcha. Because he teaches Rabbi Nachman in the Kutimra on Lesson 24, that the da'at of Hashem is what's called the keter. It's beyond what's the, this level called the crown, which hi hides behind it Hashem's infinite light, which is His, so to speak, kivyachol, His wisdom. To tap into the keter, Rabbi Nachman teaches, you need simcha as a prerequisite. Rav Nosen puts it in a nice, beautiful verse, packaged from the Gemara, based on the Gemara in Shabbat, page Pezayin Pechet, 87-88, which talks about the, the Jews receiving the Torah. When the Jews said, Naaseh Nishma, we will do and we will listen. So then it says that 600,000 angels came and put two crowns on the head of every Jew. One because he said Naaseh, so he gets one crown, and one for Nishma, the second crown. And when there was the sin of the golden calf, so 1,200,000 angels came down to take back the crowns. And the Gemara continues, but Hashem is going to Na'atid in the future, give back the crowns to the Jewish people. And like the verse reads, the verse, V'simchat olam al rosham. I think it's a verse from Isaiah or Yirmiyahu, which translates, the simcha of, that was always there, the simcha of the world will be on their head. So as if to say, in other words, in time to come, the simcha from this world, the weight of waiting for this moment, joyous moment, mom, moment, Al Rosham will merit the Jewish people to have again what was what's supposed to be on the head, which is a crown. Rav Nosen interprets it like this: How do you get to the keter, the crown? How do you get to the crown, which represents Hashem's wisdom? Hashem did the hey dot, the hey of dot, Hashem's dot, which is the keter with the infinite light wisdom. How do you get to that? By simchat olam. What simchat olam? There's a few explanations. The simcha that the Jews had while in this world, they worked hard to do mitzvot besimcha. Number two, simchat olam, even though you're so upside down and mixed with worldliness, physicality, still you tried every time to serve Hashem with joy, even if you failed so many times, up and down, up and down, up and down. It's called simcha of this world, of, of while being trapped. It doesn't mean the simcha of, of getting drunk and having a high. We're not talking about that. Simcha of doing mitzvot. The simcha while in this world, while being attacked nonstop from the Yitzhara and the attacks of all types of distractions and side ta'avot and midot ra'ot, you're still trying to serve Hashem. So through the simcha of this world, which is so hard, and yet you try to be happy in serving Hashem, you merit to al Rosham to the Keter, okay? So here, Rav Nosson saying, the hey added to Avraham and Sarah corresponds to the five voices of joy. It would be amazing if someone can research the, the medical nutritious difference between wheat and spelt and rye, you know, and oats and barley, you know, the, the five grains that are challah and that you can make bread that are chametz, you know, and their, their chemical intake and nutritional value. And then we can compare them to the five types of joy. You have the kol, Rav Nosen in this lesson, in Birkat Hoda'a, Allah Chavav, in Likutei Alachot, he has mainly, mainly five major advices on how to be happy on to work on being happy. Number one is by acting silly, mila dishtuta, telling jokes, acting silly, stupidity, but it makes you laugh. And even though it's like a joke and it's ridiculous 
and it's nonsense, but the fact that it makes you crack up, it makes you laugh, is a stepping stone to come to true joy. And he says, we're so stuck in the mundane, mundanity and confusion of the world, which is called, Rabbi Nachman calls it, the exchange, of cha uh, the, the exchange chambers, that is this world, that the Yetzirah exchanges everything, good for bad, evil for, for so good for evil, pure to impure, kosher to non-kosher, right, permissible to forbidden, everything's upside down, truth and falsehood, everything's screwed up, everything's mixed up, okay, everything's mixed up, and that's what we're in, okay, so because of that, we have no other choice, he says, Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi Nossan explains this, that other than to act silly and, and stupid and tell stupid jokes, because that belongs to the domain of the evil, the domain of the exchange chambers, by telling a silly joke and then laughing, we're able to release the true joy which is trapped in the evil domain, release it, and then once it's released, we can grab it and elevate it and bring it to true joy, which is the joy of giving thanks to Hashem, the joy of doing mitzvot, etc. Okay? That's the first type of joy. Second type of joy is by dancing and hand clapping, okay? By seeing a nigun. That's why a lot, many times today people need music to get in a good mood. It's so helpful. You see here in Yerushalayim, the stores that are trying to sell food for Shabbat, right? You have stores that sell nuts and chips and supermarkets that are owned and run by Jews and, and all the customers are Jewish and religious. So they know to give people an incentive to buy more, they put on hip Jewish religious music and puts people in such a good mood. Okay, 20 shekels, give me 240 shekels. In other words, it pushes people to buy more because they're in such a good mood. They just want to buy more than they need. And it's done purposely to encourage people to be in a positive, happy attitude. And with that, they'll buy more. <laughs> so, anyway, but it works. Okay, that's the power of music and dancing and hand clapping and singing, etc. Number three, Rabbi Nachman's very important te and, and seminal teaching of Azamra, of finding the good points, finding the good points, Azamra, to find and seek out the good points that you have. Number four, giving thanks. Once you find the good points, to give thanks to Hashem for all the amazing good points and all the kindnesses that He's doing for you and the miracles and everything, to give thanks. Don't, don't just deny it and, ah, okay, let's go on with life. Recognize it, give thanks, appreciate it, stop and make that gesture. So important, okay? Number five, the greatest joy, Rav Nossin writes, is the joy of the future. That you know that in the end, everything's going to work out. If in the end, everything's going to work out, so why be miserable in your life? If your life is only 120 years of a film that's 6,000 6, years, let's say, and in the end, Hashem's going to have His way. The good will be rewarded. There's going to be a resurrection of the dead. You're going to see all the parents, the grandparents, great-grandparents. Everyone's going to be together and happy, and, and you, you'll be rewarded for every good gesture of good that you did. So why are you upside down now? When you're looking just at the present exclusively, you have what to be sad about. It's what to be sad about. But when you connect the present to the future, Rav Nassim says, you can draw, this, draw the simcha of the future to the present, which is where all salvation comes from. It's an amazing advice. He goes really deep into this, Rav Nassim, in the Kutel Achot, Hoda Avav, as a major avenue for salvation in life by tapping into joy from the future, drawing it into the present. And this brings salvation for the present. You don't have to be stuck. No one says you have to be stuck. The present dictates you're stuck. But if you connect the present to the future, draw the simcha from the future to the present, so then you draw that salvation also from the future to the present, and that way you can find an opening with Hashem. So these five are the five grains, the he da'at, and this is why Avraham can give birth, and sarah for he, because it's the simcha needed in order to tap into the da'at of Hashem, that the food and the dot should work out and do what it has to do to connect the person to the dot of Hashem. So this is done by the hey kolot of simcha, the kol sason, kol simcha, kol chatan, kol kala, kol omim hodul Hashem kitov, right? Those five voices of joy, different types of joy, like we mentioned five different categories which correspond simcha, sason, simcha, sason you can say is extreme happiness, crazy happiness, it's the happiness of telling jokes, Kol Simcha is when you're dancing and moving in melody, that's Simcha. Kol Chatan is finding the good points, that he's so happy that Hashem gave him a wife and everything, that the joy of a Chatan, and the joy of the Kala, who's saying, thank you Hashem, thanksgiving, thank you for, for the miracles that I've done. And the, the ultimate future joy is giving, also giving thanks to the future reward, what's going to happen. 
We should be zoche to draw this hay of Avraham into our lives because there's so much sadness in the world right now. And the world events are, and also the media is doing such a good job getting people just glued to the, the news and pictures and videos of the atrocities done this year, unfortunately. But it's not a mitzvah to become sad and depressed in, in order to feel a Jewish a connection and affiliation, have to feel the pain. Yes, you have to feel the pain, and we felt it already. But to get to be stuck in the pain is wrong. And to function based on that pain is wrong. The goal of the pain is in order to get out. In other words, simcha and light can only be appreciated if you first experience a dosage of sadness. You're exposed to sadness. You're not meant to stay there and to be stuck there. You're meant to now use that as a, um, as a springboard to go forward to be happy. Because Hashem wants us to be simcha. And Rabbi Nachman says in this lesson 24, Likut Imran, that the Jews are going to come out through joy. It's not like we're waiting for joy to happen and then, and in other words, when Mashiach will come with the joy with it. No. We need a prerequisite joy in order for Mashiach to come. Ki besimcha tetzehu translates through, not just, you know, it's going to be with joy, through joy, prerequisite of joy before Mashiach comes. You're going to need joy to come out. If you think being sad and crying and davening out of misery and everything is going to bring Mashiach, that's still not there. It's a prerequisite. You have to get to that simcha. Ki besimcha tetzehu, which be to have the high, the hay kolot of Avraham, and be besimcha bezat Hashem. And like in this parsha, he's told that through that he'll have Yitzchak, his son, he'll have a child, which be zoche also that Am Yisrael will now reproduce more and more beautiful Jewish neshamot to come back, to come again, and to, to finally complete the redemption bezat Hashem.